Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video we will talk about exploit protection in Microsoft Defender for Endpoint. Well, exploit protection automatically applies many exploit mitigation techniques to operating system processes and application. Exploit protection is supported beginning with Windows 10, a version 1709, Windows 11 and Windows Server version 1803. Exploit protection works best with Defender for Endpoint, which gives us detailed reporting into exploit protection events and blocks as part of the usual alert investigation scenarios. So if you know about alert investigation uh, scenarios, you can you have investigated alerts using the alert stories, alert timelines, details, pan and uh, under incidents and alerts. You, we can enable exploit protection on an individual device and then use group policy to distribute the XML file to multiple devices at once. So I'll just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. Well, there are a number of ways you can enable exploit protection. You can enable it through Windows Security App, Intune, MDM, Microsoft Configuration Manager, Group Policy, PowerShell. But I will will see how we can enable it through Intune. So when you are in the when you are at the Intune portal, if you'll see the devices and you'll see device configuration and you go into the configuration profile i'm sorry i think i'm at the wrong screen okay i was at the wrong place when you are uh, on the intune screen intune portal click on endpoint security and then and uh, in here click on uh, attack surface reduction and when you will click on surface, you click on create summary, create on create policy, and then you click on windows, you click on exploit protection. Exploit protection helps protect against malware that uses exploits to infect devices and spread. Exploit protection consists of a number of mitigations that can be applied to either the operating system or individual applications. Click on create, just name it and uh, give the description. This is the configuration settings, exploit protection settings. So when you will, because it, it automatically applies a number of exploit mitigation techniques on both the operating system and the individual apps. If you will click on configure through this, you are pushing up a configuration which represents the desired system and application mitigation options to all the devices in the organization. So this configuration is represented by an XML. You need to re read more about it before evaluating or enabling and experience the uh, the configuration. The system settings requires a reboot. The application settings do not require a reboot. If you want to add a file or open a file, it will open up it from here. You don't have any file or if you want to import it you can add the path here xml value you want to give it and then you will click on next if you don't have any you don't do it windows defender security center disallow exploit protection override what it does is prevent users from making changes to the exploit protection settings area in the windows defender security center that they can use it on their local machine if you disable or do not configure this setting, local users can make changes in the exploit protection settings area. So if you do not want it, then local users cannot make changes in the exploitation area. Click on that option. Okay, click on next. Default scope tag. This will exist by default on all Intune entities whenever a user defined role scope tag is not present. Uh, this is the assignment. This is the review create. You hit click on save. This will push down this configuration setting. And if you want to evaluate, if you want to enable exploit protection for testing, you can do it on a single machine from here or from uh, the Windows security app. And you can also do it through PowerShell commands. 
then you can review the exploit protection audit events and then you can collect the feedback and then you can enable exploit protection on large number of machines in your organization you can customize exploit protection by using a mitigations that you can configure for individual applications some mitigation can also be applied at the operating system level and you can also configure system level mitigations with the windows uh, security app now if when you set each of the mitigation to on or off or to their default value some mitigations have additional options that are in indicated in the description of the table so when you will use the microsoft documentation so let's say the mitigation is control flow guard what does it do it ensures control flow integrity for indirect calls it can optionally suppress exports and use strict control flow guard it can be applied to system and an application level and we don't have an audit mode available for this there are some of the mitigations for which there is audit mode available but for majority of them Oh, sorry for you'll see few of them for which the audit mode is not enabled now before you export a configuration file you need to ensure you have the correct settings so you configure exploit protection on a single device dedicated device then you customize exploit protection for more information when you have configured exploit protection to your desired state including both system level and application level mitigations you can export the file using uh, the windows security or powershell so you can uh, export a configuration file uh, through powershell or windows security or the windows uh, security app and then you can import a configuration file that you previously created and you can import it through powershell then you can manage or deploy your configuration using group policy to distribute the configuration on a large number of devices and as and when the issue arises you can troubleshoot exploit protection mitigations so when you create a set of exploit protection mitigations or known as configuration you might find that the configuration export and import process does not remove all unwanted mitigations then you have to manually remove unwanted mitigations in windows security or you can use the fall the powershell script which is available on microsoft documentation to remove all process mitigations okay so i hope this was informative for all of you if you have any further queries please mention them in the comment section and i will see you guys in the next video thank you have a good day